Hi, Prithviraj, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? I am fine, sir. Sir, I have to tell you this. Your films actually gave us a good company during the lockdown. <laughs> thank you. In fact, maybe uh, that's why Telugu people love you so much. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you found solace in my films during the lockdown. <laughs> yes, sir. Definitely. Sir, uh, before we start about the movie, I, I should ask you this question. Our Telugu film industry, our producers, I know that uh, once they find an interesting prospect somewhere, they will line you with uh, big, big advances and uh, checks. How did you resist that tem temptation? Uh, so, I mean, I, uh, I have producers from Telugu industry have been courteous uh, enough to approach me with, with films and offers, but uh, uh, I am not, you know, I'm not somebody who, if you mean directorially, I'm not somebody who will direct films one after the other. And also as an actor, I tend to follow the good script, you know, if the next good script is coming to me from Telugu, then I'll do it. If it is coming to me from Malayalam, then I'll do it in Malayalam. In fact, if it is coming to me from Assamese cinema, I'll do that. So for me, it's only the next interesting script. And uh, regarding checks and all that, I have enough money now. I don't want that. But uh, <laughs> uh, this is very difficult, I should say, because uh, in, in Malayalam industry, you make uh, films in a limited budget and all uh, market conditions are different. Mm -hmm. And uh, when a Telugu producer offers, I know how they, they, they will tempt you that with big fat checks and everything. Mm -hmm. How do you resist that temptation? It is not tempting for me anymore. Uh, okay. I am I'm living a comfortable life. It's not that if I get uh, another 50 crores from somewhere, my life is going to change entirely. So, I'm, I, I don't want, need the money. <laughs> you are as simple as your films. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm being honest. So. <laughs> okay. Sir, about the goat life actually. Uh, the other day, you were telling that uh, uh, this idea was first conceived in uh, 2009. The idea of the film, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it looks so long. Uh, it took so long, actually. Yeah. Uh, you told me that uh, it had to wait because uh, we, uh, the scale of film had to be ha uh, will take time. Yeah, it wasn't why easy is, to. Why is that so big? Because the Blessy's vision for the story was always like this. He wanted. He had always had this grand canvas uh, against which the story needs to be narrated. He always wanted to go to real locations and shoot it organically with you know not do it as a compromised version of the man's experience. So because of that, we knew that it is going to be a very expensive film and more importantly, logistically, a very, very challenging film. And uh, it took us 10 years to, you know, we had multiple meetings, met so many potential investors, producers, but it took us 10 years to finally set the project rolling. And uh, because in those 10 years, a lot of things had changed. And by 2018, Malayalam cinema had become big enough for us to, it is still a big, big risk, but at least we could start dreaming about such a film. We could start, uh, we could now think that this is possible. Uh, so that's why it took so long. Uh, so, because uh, we always wanted to do this as a no compromise film, you know. Yeah. Okay. Sir, but often uh, we hear certain things uh, in the industries actually. You, you conceive an idea, you travel it, uh, it with uh, one or year, one year or two years or three years. In between, there, uh, there is a danger of always uh, some other movie coming with a similar script. Someone may, may have the similar idea. Yeah. And also some ideas over a period of time, they grew uh, stale, in the, uh, stale in the market. Yeah. Because uh, in not even similar, even similar things, uh, other movies and other industry, people are exposed to OTT these days. Mm -hmm. They tend to lose relevance. Mm -hmm. uh, is it not uh, so dangerous actually? No, in terms you of You did Najib's, not face anything like that? In terms of Najib's life, I don't think it will ever lose relevance. Even if this film is made 25 years later, I th still think it will be a relevant film because we are talking about a real life that somebody lived. Yes. Uh, and just because there might be other films shot in the desert, or there might be other films about captivity or, con you know, yeah. or forced labor or something, I don't think this becomes irrelevant. Because this in itself has its own story to say. Okay. Najib's story is it's a separate arc by itself. Yes, like most survival thrillers, the common thread that runs through all these films will run through this film also because the story is about the human spirit and the resilience of the human mind and all that. But Najib's story is special and different on its own and I think that is timeless. His life story is, is timeless and will remain timeless. And I think that quality is there for this film also that you could maybe see this film years later and still think it's, it's today's film. Sir, the survival thrillers uh, mostly uh, in most of the films they have the problem with the pace. 
actually because only you see a only one location mm -hmm. all the time and also uh, into the next 10 minutes or 15 minutes from the story you uh, understand the objective of the film yeah. survival thriller is uh, in one location and uh, one objective how to get out mm -hmm. usually uh, while making such films uh, people uh, filmmakers struggle with pace actually they make slow paced films what happened with uh, goat life so it Goat life that way is different from the conventional survival thriller that you are talking about because it is not about getting stuck in one place and then the story till getting out. Uh, goat life is more about living there, it's about how to sustain and exist and survive there. Uh, Najib does not even have an escape plan or an escape date in front. He has no hope of escape, okay. you know. So for him it's just how do I survive here? So his whole faith is based on the fact that I should just survive this and whatever is at the other end of it, I should just meet that fate. It could be death, it could be escape, it could be salvation, whatever it is, I'm, I'm, I will meet that fate. So that way it's a very different survival thriller because I think this film is also more of a very deeply meditative character study. But having said that, the experiences that he's lived through in those three and a half years, is so dense that when you make it into a feature film narrative, it almost feels like it is happening back to back to back. So for me, it's, I don't have a problem with the pacing of the cinematic narrative of, of uh, the goat life at all. Even the book for that matter, uh, which is much more detailed uh, than the film. Because of course in the book, you can micro detail everything. And it's a 43 chapter, reasonably big book. I mean the Malayalam version. If you pick it up and start reading, it is almost impossible to put it down. Okay. Lot many people who would have read R. G. Udham would have told you, will, will tell you that, oh, I read it in one go, I read it in one go. Because even the book has that quality. And I believe that quality is, has been imbibed in the film also. It's a film that you think is just, it, it's an event film that to you seems like events are happening one after the other. So no, I don't think there's an issue with the pacing at all. Okay. Yeah. Sir, what is that ending we are looking at? Of what? You you tell me that uh, Nazib doesn't have uh, a proper date. No, or everybody knows plan. what the ending was. The okay. ending is that he survived it and he made it back to India. Okay. That is oh. the ending. So it's a, I mean, the Najib is alive and well and amongst us today. So there is no suspense to how the film ends. Okay. But even with that, I think the film will keep you at the edge of your seat because the emotional journey is so. There are so many upheavals. There are so many highs and lows in that emotional arc of the character that it is uh, almost impossible at least for me to disengage uh, as a viewer. Okay. Sir, uh, Malayalam films or for, the, uh, for that matter your films I have seen that uh, you struck to so much of realism. Mm -hmm. So you are playing a slave in, the, uh, in this film. How difficult it is for you or what did you do to get into the skin of the character? So my uh, preparation for the character was largely and in fact almost solely based on Blessy's imagination of what the character should be like. Uh, all the detailing in terms of what were the experiences, how, what he felt during those days, it's all documented in the book written by Benjamin. And Benjamin is the story writer of the film also. So I had long conversations with him, with the filmmaker. So like all films, of course, my, my preparation is largely based on my director's vision, what he tells me and what is written on paper. But then, of course, there is the, the actual physical transformation into the character involved for something like this. That was a tough process. It, it took me a long while. I ended up losing 31 kilos for the film, for, for one stage of the character. So that was tough. Yeah. How did you lose that 31 kilos, sir? By not eating food. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was mostly fasting. Okay. Yeah. It's not, it's not healthy. It's yeah, not, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that, yeah. that's what I was about to ask you. Nobody would recommend uh, to do a diet or anything to lose 31 kg. Absolutely cages. not. Nobody would. Nobody should also. I mean, unless there is no reason to lose one third of your body weight, more than one third of your body weight, unless you are like dangerously obese or something. Because uh, I, and you know, I, for me, I would only do this for a film, for a character. And I don't even know, I, I pretty much know for sure that I will not be able to do it again. Because, yeah. Okay. You used to survive on uh, liquid diet only? No, when you, f only fasting, that means like you can have, I used to have water and black coffee. And some, I used to fast for sometimes up to three days, uh, regular. Yeah, yeah, 72 hour fast and 48 hour fast. Then for the longest time before the film shoot started for about eight months, I was continuously on a 16 hour fast. Like, How would you do the diet and still survive in the hot sun? In a yeah, it was desert? tough. It was very tough. Diet, fasting, such extreme fasting is very tough. But then to be 
squeezing in workouts in between the fasting window and then actually shooting the film it was tough yeah okay that was so great of you sir thank you probably the, that speaks about the success of your films well i uh, let's hope so i mean my transformation or what i went through and all is nothing compared to what the real man must have endured but let's hope that all these efforts culminate in the film finding a connection with the audience probably yeah. this is the best debut uh, sorry best uh, tribute you can give to the that man yeah i mean the the film is of course a tribute to the life that he lived you know uh, it is it is about him uh, and uh, i the the biggest hope i have is that this film finds uh, resonates with audiences all over the world so that they realize they get to know of his life they know that ma- so there is somebody who lived this so that is the biggest achievement the film could potentially have yeah sir uh, malayalam film industry is a beautiful industry you make uh, very sensible films and you keep them in very limited budget and everything uh, in the ott these days of ott era we uh, in telugu film industry most uh, medium film budgets are uh, helped by the fact uh, ott market increased so much the post theatrical uh, release ott rights are fetching so much of rights what exactly is the ott market in uh, Uh, Malayalam sir it's a hugely fluctuating market even for telugu cinema yeah, it, it started fluctuating now but yeah. at one stage uh, people were even recovering uh, 70% of the budget yeah, yeah we went through malayalam cinema went through a phase where we used to consistently recover 100 maybe even more percentage of the film's budget through streaming rights alone but that is now you know that's fluctuate fluctuating hugely and we all knew that it would fluctuate once the correction numbers set in and uh, the streaming service partners uh, start getting their numbers in and they realize what kind of traction each cinema is able to create we knew the fluctuation would set in but uh, the uh, in a healthy industry you should always look at all those revenue streams purely as ancillaries you should primarily base your hopes and your plan your business model everything on the theatrical release you know um the ideal scenario would be that a film is profitable only from theaters and everything else is a bonus yes. so yeah i mean uh, sir help me understand uh, during the prime yeah. prime uh, days of this ott era how would you uh, be paid means uh, you make films on limited budget yeah we, would they pay according to the budgets or would they pay according to the popularity of your films across the country it's a combination of multiple factors Okay. it's of course for example if you it's make a film on of course who is fronting the film the okay. director the lead actor actress what is the film about uh, you know of course the the scale canvas of the film all these factors contribute to it okay sir and more, one more thing we <coughs> we watch so many malayalam films on uh, ott and we like them so much we actually think that uh, malayalam films always uh, makes very good films one thing i wanted to ask you are we exposed to only good films of malayalam cinema or are your success rate is really good our success rate is very good okay we our consistency in making uh, good cinema is, uh, is is quite high which i am very proud of but we also make unremarkable films it's not that every film happening in malayalam is wow that, that's not the case okay. but like you rightly said more often than not all the malayalam films you hear of outside of kerala are probably the good ones what is your success rate sir just my success process. rate no, no 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 your industries well, the, i don't know i mean see cinema in general so right now three films back to back came and they all did great business across the country so everybody is talking about malayalam cinema success rate four to five months back there were huge discussions in kerala about oh 150 films released and only eight films recovered their cost oh, the industry is going through a very bad phase and all that there was a huge discussion so these things keep fluctuating cinema in general the annual uh, average <coughs> cinema in general is a high failure rate business okay you should be aware of it about cinema there has never been a period of time in any industry in fact anywhere in the world where you have made 100 films a year and 70 films have been blockbusters nowhere has that happened it is a high failure percentage business and industry model uh, there is no particular success rate for malayalam cinema it varies again year to year it's nothing that we can it, there is no algorithm that you can say okay every year these many films will release and these many films will work there is no algorithm to it yeah. okay sir a uh, few months uh, maybe last year i read, i read an article somewhere Uh, malayalam film uh, theaters association they were saying that we will only screen good quality films going forward 
if we are to screen bad uh, uh, bad films they 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 are going to charge some special fee how do you, usually I nobody think, would uh, i think you have got it completely wrong i don't think there has been anything from the exhibitors like that at all okay. how can they decide what is yeah good? that's what uh, I, i read it for sure yesterday also before have, coming then, there then i then read, read it wrong it okay. that, they didn't say anything like that okay yeah, yeah. so there is nothing like that no no okay sir in telugu there is a huge demand for uh, this larger than life commercial films uh, how is it with the uh, malayalam audience uh, is there no demand for such films everywhere there is only demand for good films larger than life smaller than life equal to life and all does not matter so even if you are making a so called mass masala commercial film it still has to be very good in terms of its writing in terms of how it's made uh, like for example one of the most brilliant films in the last 5 to 6 years of course are the the films that become international phenomenons like rrr salar and all that's all there but a brilliantly made commercial film is ala vaigundapuram lo you know yeah uh, i don't think an ala vaigundapuram lo is any inferior uh, to to a very realistic malayalam film that is also a beautifully made film extremely well written and it needs serious amount of skill and craft to be able to make a film like that uh, so to me it is not that larger than life films are bad they are also great they will also be good only if they are written well made well and performed well much like realistic films so in malayalam also if there is a larger than life film made well written well it becomes a big hit like my first directorial lucifer was not a very realistic film or anything and it be- and it worked very well in malayalam yeah we telugu film industry and kannada film industry are making uh, big uh, larger than films but uh, uh, malayalam film industry got closer to audience of outside kerala through ott mm-hmm. so but one thing surprises me why uh, there are very few original uh, ott exclusive content from uh, kerala there is one kerala crime files okay and uh, there is a second part being made yeah. and uh, recently mahendra something uh, i i heard that mm. but very few original content like uh, shows and everything mm. web series shows and uh, exclusive ott films why is that because the uh, phenomenon of streaming service uh, establishments commissioning original content in malayalam in fact in regional languages is, is relatively very new they have only started now that they've begin began commissioning uh, original content where they are producing they are funding it up front uh, that's only started in malayalam now and as we speak i know a lot of things are happening many series are being produced are being shot there are many f- films that are being shot so it will come it will start hitting the platforms in the coming year okay so uh, coming to uh, goat life so what is that big uh, uh, big spectacle which uh, audience are going to watch sir in terms of uh, what is it uh, are we going to see any technical finesse or uh, are we going to see an emotional drama which one is the major highlight well i hope you are going to see both yeah. okay so what is the run time of the film sir i think it's about 254 or something yeah 254 yeah, including you know the, the thanks cards the, the the smoking the video video and all that sir usually in telugu oh, film industry uh, people tend to calculate that run time very religiously uh, anything above 3 or uh, 235 or 240 they they feel that they they are making a risk how do you filmmakers make uh, think i don't i i'm not a believer in looking at the run time of a film and judging how risky it is it is not how long a film actually is it is how long a film feels like it is so yeah, i don't yes, think yes. I don't think when you see this film you're going to think oh it's a long film I, it's you I there is actually a 3 and a half hour cut of the film okay which to me I like better yeah. okay so why did you trim that to 254 for a popular narrative we thought it would it is better to keep it a bit more concise yeah okay sir in salar uh, we liked you very much actually Thank we are you. looking forward did the prashant nil give you a narration of the second part yes so how what do you think uh, it can be better than the sec- uh, first part and what is your first feeling about it? well we hope it's going to be better than the first part which is why we are doing it <laughs> so okay yeah. so you are uh, really excited about that yes i am yeah so so w- one of the biggest shock about salar first part recently someone made a video about all the dialogues of prabhas in the movie mm-hmm. it comes about in the 3 hour film uh, he speaks barely speaks for 4 minutes okay while narrating the script did you, did you ever realize that yeah we knew we knew so, his character was somebody who doesn't speak a lot at all 
did it bother you anyways no back then in the, maybe in the script level maybe after the watching the film you would have uh, liked it but uh, during the script level did you no, it didn't bother me at all okay so uh, what what is going to be in the second part you will have fewer dialogues I can't, i can't tell you that you have to watch the <laughs> film yeah. okay yeah. when are you going to start that sir very soon so the other day you were telling that you would meet uh, prabhas in the evening did you happen to meet him yeah i did so how was, how did you spend uh, together anything <laughs> we are friends we how do you how do you spend time with a friend when you are hanging out at his house <laughs> that's so what 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 would be you discuss actually cinema, anything we, more, we we talk about cinema things outside of cinema uh and uh, yeah we we connect we bond over many things yeah so who is your favorite telugu actor sir do you, you watch uh, all the telugu films regularly no i don't okay yeah. so whom do you like uh, most i like all these guys i like prabhas i like uh, alu arjun i like ram charan i like tarak uh, mahesh babu uh, you know all of them even the senior actors chiranjeevi sir balakrishna sir they are all great actors i mean i i love i like all their work but i'm i i can't claim to have seen a lot of telugu cinema i haven't yeah so what uh, this is the one of the most popular question everyone would ask you in telugu so when is that uh, first stand alone telugu cinema coming <laughs> well let's see i mean when when i get a good script and something interests me enough okay so finally before we wrap up uh, what is, what what is that one promise you are going to make to the audience uh, from goat film goat life i can promise you that like i've always said it's an absolute zero compromise film and i promise you that every single crew member behind this film is given 120% but that promise can be made for many films for many filmmakers by many actors so there is nothing i don't believe in sitting here and making any taller than usual claims but one thing is as you see the film you if you if you do not lose sight of the realization that it is a film but it is also a real life that a man lived then i think you will get an epic experience out of watching it anyways uh, as you said many people will do many promises but when prithviraj sukumaran uh, makes a promise we audience actually tend to may, uh, take it more seriously <laughs> thank you so much i hope i live up to all the probably this yeah. is the credibility you have earned over thank the years thank you thank you so much we are uh, looking forward to see more of you thank and you. hopefully in telugu very soon thank you thank you all so the best for uh, what this film and also for sala too we thank are you. very excited thank you thank you sir thank you for giving time